created a lead magnet, but you have not gotten any opt-ins or your opt-ins are low. Listen, this video is for you because today we're going to dive deep in to creating a audit of your lead magnet. So if this subject inter interests you, what you want to do is you want to keep watching because you know how your girl do. I, I sprinkle in a little bit of uh, bonuses along the way. So you want to watch to the end. Today, we're going to revive your lead magnet and your conversions. So the first step, the first step in reviving that old lead magnet is to ensure that you, your solution is clearly defined to the audience. Let me explain. Let me explain. Before you do anything, you want to assess why this helps your audience. You want to, in your audit, you want to assess the relevance to your target audience. And when you do this, you want to think in the mind of the audience, not as the business owner. Why? Because remember, your ideal client, they may be, they may have, they may be frustrated with an issue. They may have desires, which are really great things, or they may have fears or pain points that has to be handled like fragile goods, okay? You can't go in there all willy and nilly on them. You have to take baby steps. You got to hold their hand through it. And you have to build up like, no, and trust, okay? So you don't want to just dump everything on them. So here's an example. So I had a desire to hit my lead magnet mark. I wanted to convert let's say 10%. I don't remember what the percentage was at the time because it's been many, many years ago, but follow me anyway. So when I was a financial coach, I had this lead magnet that'll help people increase their income, right? Right. So, and I knew that I helped people that were in debt and debt because I gave in this lead magnet, I gave little things that I did in order to increase my income. It worked for me. I knew it would work for the customer. However, I was thinking in the mindset of the business owner and not of the audience member. So, and let me tell you the difference. The business owner is concerned about the conversion rate, about uh, getting more engagement, about converting these leads into clients. The, the client or the ideal customer is more concerned with finding somebody that they like, they know that they can trust to solve their situations. So when I was freeing myself of over $120,000 of debt, I was stressed out. I had tons of hats. I wore tons of hats. I was a, I was a newly divorced mom. I had three children. I was the only one working. I was going to school full time, working full time, seeing to their needs, seeing to my needs. And guess what? I didn't really have much help. So I was stressed out. I didn't know what to do. I had pl spent plenty of nights crying, asking God to help me figure out how I was going to resolve this issue. Why did I give you that information? Because some things that seem simple to you, because when I created my lead magnet, I thought it was simple. That's your, you make more income, boo, you, boom, you solve your problem. Wrong. So when people are beyond knees deep in debt or problems, pain points, they can't always see those easy solutions. What may be easy for you as the business owner is not always easy for the client. So I didn't throw that lead magnet away. No, I didn't. Let me tell you what I did. Come here. What I did was use that, use that lead magnet, introduce that to my customers, my ideal customers, after I've taken baby steps 
baby steps by offering free webinars or free in-person classes and in exchange for them filling out my survey, filling out my survey, guess what? They got that free lead magnet. That way I was not wasting that lead magnet. I could still use it to get people to uh, help me grow my business and still solve a problem. See, it's more than one way to skin a duck. <laughs> step. The next step is you want to analyze your and your engagement metrics can be found on your lead. Uh, whoever hosts your your email hosts, your social media pages like um, YouTube Studio and things of that nature, wherever the you have the customer go to the process steps that you have the. Uh, from the where the customer finds you, where the customer has the opportunity to opt, opt in, those are the numbers that you need in order to perform your analysis, such as opt-in rates, open rates, conversion rates. You want to identify the trends of or patterns uh, that may exist. It may be between your different lead magnets or it may be between your competitors. So, for example, if you have 120 leads and 12 of those leads convert to customer, then your conversion rate is 10%. All right. So the common conversion rate for an email opt-in landing page is between 5% and 15%. So a 10% is a good conversion rate. You want to make sure that you collect your at least 30 days of data for a good analysis. The next step to optimize your impact with your lead magnet is you want to record the insights that you found to create a strategy in resolving or reviving your lead magnet. You want to make strategic adjustments to your lead magnet tiny steps just little tweaks okay you want to make uh little tweaks and that could be updating content redesigning the layout refining your target strategy remember small tweaks okay for example let's say you had a previous lead magnet let's say you used they were uh the letters were in blue, you use new Romans and the font size was 15, blue writing with pink highlights, right? And you notice that with that one, more people who engage with uh, from your social media page or from the landing page, you found the majority of them were women. Women. And you compare that with your present lead magnet, the lead magnet that you may have no or or low opt-in is in Arial, font size is 10, font color is black, and the background is white with no highlights. So instead of just changing everything exactly how the one that you discovered that had more opt-ins what you want to do is you want to make tweaks one at a time and you want to give 30 days to evaluate to see if it really makes if that one little tweak will make a change let's say the first for example the first 30 days you may have just changed the color size because you went and deep dive and you learned about the effects of colors, you know that's common and you're dealing with numbers because let's say you're a financial coach too. You're dealing with numbers. So you know the calmer you you make the people, the less stress, the more that they can input information that you're trying to give them, right? So you decide to make them uh, blue. And after 30 days, you notice there is a significant change. And you're like, great. So you want to keep that motive, that, uh, method or that strategy going for beyond 30 days and continue to test it. Or you may have decided that maybe you're not only 
doing that the next 30 days you may decide to change the font to 15 or and then the next 30 days you you decide to change the colors you've made little bitty tweaks don't make anything dramatic be, or real big tweaks because you'll get confused you'll get frustrated and you won't know where the change is coming from you only want to make small changes Okay, so there you have it. There's three strategies that you can use to make to do your audit, your audit like a pro and revive that lead magnet. I hope this, if you found this information helpful, please give me a thumbs up. It'll really help this video. Wait, wait, before you leave, before you leave. Before you leave, I just have one special thing for you. If you click in the description below, you have the opportunity to grab my Profitable Niche and Lead Magnet Guide to accelerate your business growth. Trust me, you don't want to miss on this opportunity. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.